Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Thank you for stopping by. Um, we've posted the interview with Apoorva, uh, we've posted the main speak with St Paul's and the Q&A session as well. Um, just go to the rich wrap-ups and the, the first links at the top of the page. Macro thoughts, I like this tweet from Javier Blas, quote of the day, this time is difficult, but it's more difficult for the boys than for the men. That is the Total CEO, um, which I thought was a very bullish type of comment. And then uh, just to note, oil-rich Gulf Cooperation Council countries' fiscal deficit hit a 20-year peak of 12.5% in 2016. Uh, this is Moody's uh, uh, saying this. Home thoughts went back to Hunter S. Thompson. There is no way, the H, there is no honest way to explain it because the only people who really know where it is are the ones who have gone over. The others, the living, are those who pushed their control as far as they felt they could handle it and then pulled back or slowed down or did whatever they had to when it came time to choose between now and later. But the edge is still out there. NASA's Kepler telescope captured a brilliant flash of a supernova shockwave for the first time ever. Then I went to Albert Camus. In the depth of winter, I finally learned that within me there lay an invincible summer. And then Mother died today, or maybe yesterday. I can't be sure. The trigger gave, I felt, the smooth underside of the butt and there, in that noise, sharp and deafening at the same time, is where it all started. I shook off the sweat and the sun. I knew that I had shattered the harmony of the day, the exceptional silence of the beach where I'd been happy. Then I fired four more times at the motionless body where the bullets lodged without leaving a trace, and it was like knocking four quick times on the door of an happiness. I like this photograph of an Indian student taking part in an event to celebrate the Holy Festival in Calcutta. Looks happy, doesn't he? Political reflection, CCTV footage provided by Belgian of the suspects, the sources, the Belgian Federal Police. There was a report yesterday that the main suspect in the Brussels attacks was caught, but then the story was subsequently retracted. Authorities said it was said on Wednesday had arrested 24-year-old Najim Lajraoui, one of the three men filmed on closed-circuit TV wheeling baggage carts at the airport. Brothers Khalid and Brahim El Bakrui, residents of the Belgian capital, have also been identified as suicide bombers who blew themselves up at the airport and at a metro station. Put up a photograph of Najib Lajraoui, and that took me to Albert Camus. This piece, the Byronic hero, incapable of love, or capable only of an impossible love, suffers endlessly. He is solitary, languid, his condition exhausts him. If he wants to feel alive, it must be in the terrible exaltation of a brief and destructive action. And I think that is, there's a lot about these sorts of suicide bombs that are running around. The avoidable war with China, says Asia Times, there is a lot of talk lately about the growing likelihood of a war between China and the United States. A recent op-ed in the Washington Post spoke darkly of the two countries heading toward a dangerous showdown in Asia. Professor Hugh White at the Australian National University has even written an article with the title It's Time We Talked About War with China. 
And that took me back to December 2013 when I wrote the pivot to Asia Bears and Spangs, and it's heating up there now. And I said then, given that the trajectory is one of gradual erosion of the US's decisive advantage, it leads me to the view that this pivot to Asia has a logic and momentum of its own. Therefore, I see the US being increasingly determined to press its advantage. One might even posit that calming down the Iranian front allows the US to better concentrate its energies on the pivot to Asia. Australia said on Thursday that plane debris recovered earlier this month from Mozambique was highly likely to have come from Malaysian Airlines MH370. I'll just point out, Mozambique is 2,100 kilometers of beach. And if you were seeking to dump anything anywhere, you would be able to in Mozambique. The analysis concluded that debris is almost certainly from MH370 that such debris has been found on the east coast of Africa is consistent with drift modeling and further affirms our search efforts in the southern Indian Ocean. I wrote in August 2014, uh, I said the signal announcing this new arrhythmic normal was the disappearance of MH370. I said picking up the signal through the noise of our world in 2014 is no easy thing. In fact, my view is the new normal is a very arrhythmic world. When I plugged arrhythmia into my computer, it threw this up. For years, I've been studying the phenomenon of chaos, of which an arrhythmic heartbeat was a perfect example. His Excellency Johann Borgstam told me the signal announcing the new arrhythmic normal was the disappearance of MH370. Since then, planes have been falling out of the sky like flies. And the uncertainty around MH370 and MH17, which is sharpened by the way the story seemingly turned on and off, took me back to Don DeLillo. We are not witnessing the flow of information as much as pure spectacle, or information made sacred, ritually unreadable. The small monitors of the office, home and car, become a kind of idolatry here where crowds might gather in astonishment. And then a very interesting piece in Bloomberg, five countries, five beleaguered leaders. Um, Jacob Zuma, of course, is number one. For the first time in his nine years as head of the ruling party, Zuma, 73, faces a real threat to his power. Some senior African National Congress officials are trying to oust him over his ties to a prominent family accused of using the relationship to further their business interests and even influence government appointments. Asked by the opposition to resign in Parliament last week, Zuma was as defiant as ever over whether his friends were offered cabinet posts. Don't ask me, he said. Where do I come into it? Zuma has outfoxed all opponents so far, and his control over most of the ANC is still strong. The question is whether his resilience can last. A very interesting interview by the Credit Suisse CEO, uh, Tijana Tian, said the firm's traders have ramped up holdings of distressed debt and other illiquid positions without many senior leaders' knowledge, helping lead to a first quarter loss in the market's business. This wasn't clear to me, it wasn't clear to my CFO and to many people inside the bank firm laid out a strategy in October, TM said Wednesday, there needs to be a cultural change because it's completely unacceptable, so he's taken a pounding. Bloomberg markets the stock sell-off is deepening in Asia as oil sinks amid the dollar's recovery, the dollar's on the bounce, let's get to the currency markets, euro dollar 111.55. Remember, it clocked uh, 113.42 as a high last week. Dollar index 96.19, Japanese yen 112.90, Swissy 0.9762, the pound 140.76. Um, and this is on concerns that the attacks in Brussels would aid the campaign to leave the European Union in June. The Brexit vote, Aussie. Let's take a look at what that is at, 0.7504. 
Indy Route P66.891, South Home 111.66.12, the Real 368.52 when I looked last, uh, Egyptian Pan 8.88 and the Rand 15.4115. <coughs> Dollar Index, I'll put up a three month chart, I'm expecting further upside progress, I'm glad I called it earlier this week. Sterling, look at this three month chart, that's on the down move now as people are more worried. Um, uh, three months until the vote, two charts show how the FX market is playing Brexit, they're betting on high volatility and a lower pound. Um, Euro sterling has hit a 15 month high and UK's five year default probability has jumped as Brexit risks rise after the Brussels uh, terror attacks. Gold has dropped 2.9% since March 10. Um, uh, I'll put up a chart that Bloomberg posted and you can see that people continue to buy, buy into gold notwithstanding the rally fading. Um, I'll put up um, another chart, I think 1250 is the key pivot, we're at 1216.25. Um, oil price stops rallying as crude inventories rose by 9.36 million barrels last week to the highest level ever. I'll put up a one month chart, I think we're going to fade away uh, quite quickly actually. Um, Javier tweeted a couple of days ago, Glencore also enjoying a big rally from September to October lows up 140% and well above its 200 day moving average and I said sell. Standard Chartered is set to curb its $2 billion diamond exposure, diamond prices, have a look at this chart, have not done that well of late. Global sugar shortage outlook raised by Green Pool on El Nino. A global shortage of uh, sugar will be larger than previously expected in the next season as El Nino induced droughts hurt crops in Asia. Green Pool commodity specialists said, Have a look at this global sugar futures rally. And probably got further to go. Let's move on to Africa. Congo's Dennis Sassou Nguesso has secured 67% of votes in his bid to extend his 32 year old rule. That was partial results late last night, subsequently become confirmed. President Dennis Sassou Nguesso was surely going to win even if he lost some elections, which I like that. Very interesting piece in Bloomberg about Djibouti is hot. How a forgotten sandlot of a country it became a hub of international power games. The bartender measures a shot of Johnny Walker red label in a steel jigger dumps it over ice, a waitress sets the glass on a tray and steers it through the dining room, where Abuye Wang, the restaurant owner, commands a booth from the back corner, elbows on the table, surveying the dinner crowd. The buzz cuts perched around the high table in the middle of the room are Americans, he guesses. Two women lost in conversation behind them are French, he recognizes the men the adjacent booths, German, spots an Italian court executive and a Palestinian diplomat from the newly opened embassy. The restaurant La, Ch uh, La Chamiere sits on a corner of the central square in Djibouti. This uh, country, which until recently was of little consequence to anyone who didn't live there. Uh, La Chamiere's menu pushes the outer limits of fusion as Wang caters to his evolving clientele. East African seafood dishes, Asian stir fries, French stews, American sandwiches, they're all here. If we don't have what you want, he says, we'll make it for you. It's my first night in Djibouti. I've come to La Chamier because I was told it would be full of soldiers, speculators, diplomats, spies, aid workers, contractors. All the outsiders who are turning Djibouti into an unlikely epicenter of 21st century geopolitics and basically um, uh, the reason it's, it's become this epicenter is it's, because it's all about the control of um, the Bab el Mandeb Strait and uh, some very clever dealing by Gouale, the president. I'll put up a photograph of where the president and many government ministers and other wealthy Djiboutians live 
neighborhood of Heramus, and another photograph of Menelik Square in the central Djibouti city. Angolan rebels claim to have killed 30 troops. Uh, separatist guerrillas operating in Kabinda enclave on Wednesday claim to have shot dead around 30 Angolan government soldiers in March. We are in a state of war and we face a massive military invasion from Angola. Of course, Angola is struggling with a lower oil price and these sorts of things can get a life of their own. Small Kabinda province is an enclave that borders on Congo to the north. Ghana and Ivory Coast want a bigger cut of world chocolate billions, while their Chukpek tie-up could be a game-changer. Chocolate is one of the world's most popular sweet treats, and in 2014 the global retail sales of chocolate confectionery were nearly a staggering $100 billion. Ivory Coast and Ghana are the world's number one and number two producers of cocoa beans, and together account for nearly 70% of the world's cocoa production. But the two earn just over $8 billion in cocoa exports in the global value chain for chocolate. The value is skewed heavily in favor of processors, marketers, and distributors. Cocoa growers receive just 6% of the price that consumers pay for chocolate. Ghanaian President John Dramini Mahama and his Ivorian counterpart Alassana Ouattara are proposing an OPEC for chocolate. One delegate proposed a catchy name for it, Chocolate. Good idea, they put up a chart of cocoa and it's been quite resilient. Um, and that's why the Ivory Coast is doing so well in part. South Africa also up 3.7% year to date, fell 1.54% yesterday. Dollar rand, I think we keep selling it, preferably near a 15 with a 14.75 stop. Egyptian EGX30 up 6.99% and at 19 month highs and in a bull market, Nigerian all share down 10.14% in 2016. Ghana stock exchange from positive index down 3.97%. Uhuru Kenyatta, look at this. Today I held a meeting with a delegation from Saudi Arabia led by the Foreign Minister Adil Al Jubair. We've really been getting around Africa of late, I must say. Standard Chartered Kenya reported fully a profit after tax came down 39.227%. They'd already warned in a profit warning uh, last year. Loans and advances to customers actually reduced by 6.2%. Total assets, however, went higher by 5.155%. Um, Customer deposits expense was up just 31.417%. That's better than some other people. And I think there's been a flight to quality, which only showed up in skewed in the second half of the year. And I don't think it came through. Um, profit and loss before tax down 38 percent. Profit and loss after tax down 39 percent. EPS down 39.86 percent. Dividend per share maintained unchanged. Um, and it's and they're uh, announcing a bonus issue in the portion of one new ordinary share for every nine fully paid up shares. The chief executive, Lamin Manjang, who also made that very prescient point I keep referring to about Donald Trump and the terrorist attack, said this, the profit drop was due to three factors. Lamin Manjang, the profit drop was due to three factors, an increase in the non-performing loans portfolio, the financial impact of the restructuring from the updated group strategy and a one-off net capital gain in 2014 relating to the disposal of a property. Um, banks on performing loans grew by 37%. Uh, provisions which are accountable for a deductible expense in the profit and loss statement rose to 4.8 billion from 1.3 billion the previous year. The bank's management is optimistic of bouncing back this year, stating that it had a stronger balance and is in a more liquid position. I think the set of earnings is a case of putting everything into it, the kitchen sink and all. And therefore, I expect a much stronger 2016 uh, when, you can, when you will come back to compare it with this year, with the one that's just passed. Imperial Bank Manager's fish firm owners charged with 29 billion shilling theft. Imperial Bank's head of credit, Naeem Shah, 
CFO James Kaburu and the directors of W.P. Tilling, the Nairobi-based fishmonger that confessed to receiving a third of the looted cash, denied the five counts of theft preferred against them and were released on police bonds. He couldn't make it up. The accused were charged with the theft of 29 billion shillings from the Imperial Bank, or more than 80% of the 34 billion the bank's former chief executive, Abdul Malik Jan Mohammed, is said to Transcentury, uh, sorry, Transcentury um, have announced that they've reached a settlement with bondholders. Um, Africa infrastructure company Transcentury has reached a settlement with the majority convertible bondholders, reducing the debt from $80 million to $40 million. As previously announced, the company secured an equity injunction from Kuramo Capital, uh, bringing the outstanding debt to $20 million. The process of raising the balance is ongoing and bondholders are comfortable with the structure in place to retire the outstanding total agreed debt.